Good morning. I'm Reverend Therese at Unity Spiritual Center here in Hilton Head, South Carolina. And today is Sunday, and it is the 19th of April. It's the week after Easter and all the things that happened during Holy Week. So as you join me today, settle in right where you are. We're going to talk about divine awakening so that we can accept the truth of who each of us is. So let's close our outer eyes as we're comfortable and take a moment in prayer. Living, loving presence, thank you for today. Thank you for the sunshine that is shining here in Hilton Head to remind us of the truth of who each of us is, the very light of God expressing in the world. We're grateful for technology. We're grateful for all of those who are serving on the front lines, the post people, the grocery people, truck drivers, cashiers everywhere, doctors, nurses, occupational therapists, respiratory therapists, everybody who is serving us. And so it is our prayer that we all stay washed up, prayed up, and stay home. We pray this in the name and after the nature and under the authority of the living, loving presence that is you and that is me. And so it is, and so we let it be. Amen. So I see a few of you have joined today. I'm Reverend Therese. This is Unity Spiritual Center, Hilton Head. And so it's always my prayer every day that we stay washed up, that we stay prayed up. And right now, we still get to stay home. We get to stay home. And so, of course, we always hold in our prayers, our thoughts for all of those who don't have homes. Some by choice and some because. And so it's the week after Easter. Yes, we've talked about that. And last week, Sunday, the celebration was of the risen Christ within each of us. Now, I want you to know, if you have a prayer request, go ahead and type it in the box. Let us know where you're watching from. That's always fun for me to figure out afterwards. And let me know that you're here with us in spirit. I can't identify everybody on the screen. The telephone screen is very little. And so I hope you've had a great week. For me, it kind of felt like maybe the crucifixions were still happening. So this is a time now where I want to ask you, how are you? How are your feelings? Are you moving from your head to your heart each and every time that one of those feelings has its way in through and as you? I hope you do. I'm jotting mine down and then trying to figure out what they mean later, and that's okay. So a week ago Friday was the crucifixion. We know that Jesus of Nazareth died on the cross, right? And we know that's how they killed people at the time. Sunday, after a day of tomb time and resurrection happened. And so that's what we've been celebrating is the risen Christ within each and every one of us. And Christ is not just a unity term. It's not just a Christian term. It means that, in fact, we are anointed, that we have reached the highest and the best potential within each of our minds to come from love first, because that's where God comes from. Everybody breathing? I hope so. I want to give a shout out to Mary Magdalene, to Mary the mother of James, and to Salome, who were the first three on site. 
and realized that Jesus was no longer in the tomb because the risen Christ has happened, right? And it, were, it was these three women that went then after seeing, quote unquote, Jesus, to go tell the disciples of what had happened. I posted something funny on Facebook yesterday. You can go to my page if you want to see what that's about. So thank you to Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome for leading the way into this new world that we know and that we come from. Dr. Emily Cady, one of the many great and probably the most well-known teacher in unity, wrote this in the book called Finding the Christ in Ourselves. She says, we must all recognize that it was the Christ within which made Jesus what he was. And our power now in this moment to help ourselves and to help each other lies in our getting to comprehending this same truth. For it is a truth, she says, whether we realize it or not, that the same Christ lives within you and within me as it lived in Jesus. And that's why on Easter Sunday we resurrect the risen Christ within us. We say, let's have a rising of this Christ consciousness. Emily Cady goes on to say, it is the part of God's self which is within each of us and whichever lies inside us with an inexpressible, a deep, deep love and desire to spring to the circumference of our being. I've told you before, you're a big deal. Each of us is a big deal as God expressing in this world. She says, so we spring to the circumference of our being and to our consciousness as our sufficiency in all things. The way Emily Cady wrote, similar to the way that Fillmore wrote, poetic in its way. So basically the conclusion of Emily Cady's statement, the Christ within is our sufficiency in all things. Not just some of us, all of us. No matter what our denomination, no matter what our theological or spiritual practices are. The sufficiency in all things. And that's why we say at Unity Spiritual Center of Hilton Head, go within or you go without. Go within. Thank you to those of you who keep joining us. We're grateful. You might have heard this before. Unity is a link in the great spiritual movement inaugurated by Jesus Christ as our way shower and master teacher. So Jesus of Nazareth, the guy who was walking around, right, was a teacher, yes? And when the resurrection happened and the Christ consciousness came forth as we let die all of those things that no longer serve us, right, which is what Jesus did on the cross, he becomes our shower and our master teacher, even more so than when he was walking around in his years of ministry. Our objective here as unity, and the reason why you come to our services on Sunday via Facebook Live or YouTube right now, is to hear the truth with a capital T. And guess what? You are here, I am here to prove the truth, to be the truth expressing. The truth we teach in unity is not new even though we come under the genre of new thought. We focus on how Jesus lived his life. So the truth we teach is not new. Neither do we claim, as Unity Truth students, any special revelations or discovery of new religious or spiritual principles. Our purpose in Unity, and specifically here at Unity Spiritual Center of Hilton Head, 
is to help and to teach each other. I continuously am learning, even as the minister here at Unity. We get to use our teachings to prove the truth that was taught by our master teacher. And we call our master teacher Jesus. But there were many teachers. There are many teachers today. And we get to keep learning from them, whether they're alive or they have passed on and now have angel wings. My scripture today is one that is, I would say, probably Charles Fillmore's favorite scripture. It's from Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Say that to yourself. Christ in me, the hope of glory. We are here to carry on. Not in that way. We're here to carry on the great words, the great teachings, the great consciousness that happens when we understand that in fact, we are divine and we have divinity. Not because of a class, not because of a christening or a baptism. We are divine because we are of God. I'm going to say it again. Get your pencil out. We are divine because we are of God. Our first unity principle is God is. Our second unity principle is we are. So say to yourself again, I am divine. I am divine. I say that now in the morning when I wake up and I look in the mirror. During this um, stay at home sanctuary time. <laughs> Do you wake up and think, "Woo, what happened to your hair? Yeah, yeah. So say it to yourself as often as you can. And you can say it to others when you're doing Zoom or you pass them by in the driveway. Self-care and self-love are very important components of living today. Living in 2020. So this week after Easter, we go forward and we get to step into the divine awakening that is each of us. Honoring the hope of glory that each of us gets to be in the world expressing as God, living from our truth, knowing our divinity. We live into our risen Christ consciousness. And when we live from our Christ consciousness, I always seem to point to my head, but I guess it really means my heart. When we live from this Christ consciousness, it means we come from love first. It means we breathe before we react. And hopefully the breathing helps us respond instead of reacting. And we allow and we embrace the shift, S-H-I-F-T, that's happening right now. Who would have planned, who got a day planner first of all for 2020, and I'm laughing, because the pages are brilliantly blank right now. Yes? I fill them with how I'm uh, spending time on Zoom with my family, the Donlin family, the Lee family, with my friends, gardening. And so how are you spending your days being the truth of who you are? Allowing the shift that's happened here and really all over the world right now, to be something we embrace. To create sanctuary time for ourselves each day, all day. Are you allowing yourself to shift and see a fresh, heightened beginning, making itself manifest? Because it starts the moment we choose to think and see it that way. It started with Jesus rising from the cross, 
affirming for us that death is not an end. Rather, it's a beginning to an elevated state. Everybody breathe. Hey, it's probably time for a um, hydration break, yes? So everybody, if you've got a drink by you, let's have a sip. Self-care involves hydration, self-love, staying washed up, and being prayed up. So death, that's what Easter represents. Letting die the things that do not serve us. Rising into the truth of who we are. Whether it's a physical body, some of us are also experiencing deaths of relationship, death of the stocks, our 401k, the death of an idea that we thought we might, I was supposed to have company this weekend. Death of a habit, death of a dream. And so we breathe into this. Death isn't a bad word. We've made it a scary word. And I'm not minimalizing at all the effect that death has on us, on our human emotions. Those of you who know me well know that I have experienced lots of human emotions around death because I'm a recent member of the Widows Club. Recent being eight years, still recent for me. Yeah. And so this week at Unity Spiritual Center of Hilton Head, we also experienced the physical death of Miss Lillian Louise Coughlin. 103 years old in May, she would have been celebrating her birthday. And so I got to spend some time with her daughter, Suzanne, this week. And you sit, we sit in this new awareness, this new um, way of being and knowing that Miss Lillian had dark chocolate and Coca-Cola every day. Life was sweet and she was gonna make it sweeter. And collectively as a congregation, we've had quite a few people get their angel wings since I started almost three years ago. May 1st is three years, y'all. Three years we've been together. We've got to have a big celebration when we get together. So the hope of glory that Lillian shows us with her angel wings and knowing she's present, put your hand on your heart and there is Miss Lillian. And we thank you for sharing and spending the rest of your life with us as Unity Spiritual Center, Hilton Head. And of course, today we bless Miss Suzanne and allow her the time and the quiet that she's requested to be in this new awakening and the shift that has happened this week for her physically. That's what it's about. Honoring the divine awakening that happens when a holy shift occurs. And the feelings that we are feeling, whether it's due to the coronavirus or the passing of Miss Lillian or the loss of our job or fill in the blank, the feelings that we're feeling are grief. And grief kind of has had a not so good uh, reputation. However, when we can get our minds to realize, oh, I'm feeling grief, then we get to shift into naming what that grief is. So for me, grief this week was having Miss Lillian get her angel wings, although celebrating that she got them at 102, celebrating that I got to be with her, but the grief of remembering my own mother's death, yes, and celebrating my stepmother still being alive. 
So there's always a circle as we reach the, into the circumference of our lives and knowing that always our hearts hurt with loss and that's okay. Our job here is to be real, guys. It's to be real and feel. So last week, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, and Salome, they were all feeling loss. They had a huge set of emotions, grieving the death of their loved one, who we call Jesus, right? Not knowing quite yet that the rising of the Christ consciousness was happening as they weeped at the tomb. The Bible stories tell us part of our own life. Each of the stories are our life stories as well. And obviously different characters, different time frames. But when we look at the stories and we interpret them metaphysically, we can see that there is truth in the stories for us. So I'm wondering, for those of us here at Unity Spiritual Center, how has the death of Miss Lillian awakened in you a sense of divinity? Miss Lillian knew she was divine. She knew this about herself. And so our job now to celebrate her life that she spent with us is to continue celebrating our own divinity, to live from the divinity that is each of us. So there's different ways. You might decide to dress a little snappier on Sundays when we all get back together because we know Miss Lillian always showed up as a dressy um, a snappy dresser. Yes? Creativity may be expressed through how it is you wear your jewelry. Miss Lillian always had a necklace on. How will you celebrate the sweetness of life? It may be through indulging yourself in dark chocolate or having a Coca-Cola. <laughs> I've never had a full Coca-Cola in my entire life. But we each have our own ways. Remember in Unity, we don't tell you how to think. We ask you to think. And we ask you to recognize your divinity. We get to figure out this week, not only how will we allow Miss Lillian to live through us, but also, how is it that we're going to allow the presence of the Christ to live through us? That's what this Easter time is about. Each of us has the spark of divinity within us. The Christ within us is represented by the unlimited potential that each of us has. Because we are the children of God. Children in the sense that we're born of, not children that as if we're infants, although I hope that each of us experience that innocence that children have when they see the Easter bunny or they see chalk drawings on the sidewalk or they see the face of Nana on Zoom later. How are you celebrating your innocence? How are you celebrating your divinity? We each get to decide. Divine awakenings happen when we spend time with the God of our own understanding. The God within us that we meet as we move from our head to our heart. Emily Cady tells us again in Lessons in Truth in chapter, 12, uh, chapter 2, excuse me, all that we can ever need or desire is the infinite God principle, the great reservoir, she says, of unexpressed good, living in us, awaiting to be expressed. Hmm. How will you do that today? Could be through a phone call, through, could be through technology and Zoom, could be through a handwritten note, 
cookies you deliver to your neighbor, you'll know how. You'll know how. So there is no limit, she says, to the source of our being, nor to God's willingness to manifest more of God's self through you and through me. That's our job, being God in this world. I think I've told you about the story. There was a Catholic church, and after a huge storm went through, the statue of Jesus that stood out front was quite disheveled. No hands, no feet, kind of all broken up. And the parishioners wanted to raise money to replace the statue. And the pastor there, the father there at that church said, nope, we're not doing it. We're going to leave Jesus as is, as the reminder each time you walk into the church building that we are the hands and we are the feet of God expressing in this world, as Jesus did when he was here, right? So I want to ask you, how will you rise up into your truth this week, starting today? We get to choose how to be proactive in our lives. I'm wondering, is there a fear in you that you could rise above today? Is there guilt somewhere in your mind that you could rise above today? Shame in you that you can rise above today. I hope there's none of these in you. Maybe there's just some other negative thoughts that you can rise above today. How about anger? We be truthful with ourselves. Yeah, I'm pretty angry. I can't go visit my grandchildren. And so I deal with it. I send them notes. I send them presents in the mail. We do Zoom. I look at their pictures. I post pictures on Facebook bragging about them, right? We get to decide. How about a habit? Is there a habit that you have that you can rise above today? Each time you take a moment to look at your divinity and what's keeping you from being the light in the world, take a moment and breathe through it. We're spiritual beings having human experiences. And sometimes humanity gets in the way. That's all right. We get to be God in this world expressing. My colleague, Reverend Kelly Isola, always says, if you can't see God, look for humanity. Remember, we're God expressing in this world. The risen Christ within us is what gets to be expressed. New Thought author Gene Houston said, it is no longer possible for us to live as pale, diminished versions of ourselves. So for the paleness, go outside, get some sun. I'm sure you've noticed I have a few more freckles each time you see me. I really call them angel kisses. That went over real well in fourth grade, as you can imagine, right? So it is no longer possible for us to live as pale, diminished, versions of ourselves. Nope. We have to let our light shine. I really, really do believe in my heart that we are here by divine appointment. You and I sharing this time together. All of us sharing this time together. Here for a sacred purpose. Called to raise up into our full expression of divinity for ourselves and for each other. Each of our lives is meant to be used for something beautiful and holy. How will you express that divinity today? The futurist, Bar oh gosh, let's see. The futurist, excuse me, Barbara Marks Hubbard, 
who I got to meet in, in Kansas City and also out in Santa Barbara when I served churches there. She said that right now is we are in the midst of recording. No, the word is not recording. It's reordering for a higher level of living. Each of us right now reordering our lives. Now, we might have had a little bit of help from the corona, yeah? Okay. How are you reordering your life? How do we hold on to the vision of what we know we have come here to be? The divine, which is you and me and everybody, is holding the pattern for the great expression of you and of me. Because the divine, as God expressing through you and me, is all that there is. And each time we move into the holy shift of recognizing this and coming from this, we get to remember. Just like nature teaches us, night turns into day, the sun rises somewhere. It rose here today, I thought it was going to rain. At least that's what the weather people told us. So the Easter story that we live into this week, that we've been living this past week as well, assures us that what seemed as a loss is in fact a renewal and a rising of us as we live out the very presence of the risen Christ as us, as you and me. And for those of us here at Unity Spiritual Center, we get to also figure out how we're going to live the joy that Miss Lillian was and continues to be to us now that she has her angel wings. We get to choose an awakened life. We get to be aware of our divinity and that each of us is divine. And so let's go into a time of quiet meditation. Close your outer eyes as you're comfortable. Thank you everybody for joining in. And take a moment to move from your head to your heart. Often said the longest 18 inches in our life. And breathe into this knowing that as we pre breathe together, and we each pray together from wherever we are, the joy of the Christ rises. This happens because each of us represents the expression of God uniquely in unrepeatable expressions of God. We are one in the Christ's presence, expressing as each of us, born anew each time we say yes to our divinity and being an expression of God, mind, body, and spirit, thoughts, words, and actions. Born anew each time we make the decision. Relax your mind right now and just allow the thought that I am divine to have its way in through and at you right now. Say it to yourself. I am divine. Add to it. I matter. Breathing into this truth. I am divine and I matter. And Unity Minister and author Mary Cuffery always said, God has need of me now. And I don't believe there's a truer time for this than this now moment. God has need of you now. Expressing truth, living from truth, being truth. Renewing your faith each time you decide, yes, I am divine.
engaging your strength every time you decide, yes, I am divine. And so we breathe into this truth this week, celebrating our divinity, honoring that each of us is divine. We breathe into it. We know it to be true. We let it be true. That's the key. Let it be true. Feel it in your heart. Know it. The indwelling Christ presence is you. As you. Through you. And so we breathe into this truth. We allow it to surround us. And I invite you, for those of you who know the prayer for protection, to join in and say it with me now. The light of God surrounds us. We are the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. We are the love of God. The power of God protects us. We are the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. We are the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is. And because God is, all is well. And so it is and so we let it be. I'm grateful that you were here today. And if this was a value and you'd like to make a contribution, we are willingly receiving, lovingly receiving. You can go to our website, www.unityofhiltonhead.org, practice generosity button, use your credit card. You can send us a snail mail letter and note, I love those, with a check. And most importantly, I ask, that you pray with and for us as a congregation, including us in your prayer time to do the will and the work that is ours to do here, to deepen our connection with God, self, and each other, which is our mission. And so it is and so we let it be. I am grateful for you. I will respond to all of your notes on our Facebook page and your prayer requests. And so it is, and so we let it be. Many blessings. Happy Sunday. God is blessing us now. Amen. <laughs>